So what I'm trying to do here at the overgrown garden of Tango Towers is just to try and get an aerial to work. Um, I've got a situation where a friend of ours uh, and his uh, son are having difficulty in SWRing a makeshift aerial. Now they can't do a proper base aerial. Uh, we've, you know, we've got to uh, move the camera around outside here. We have got that on the side of the building, which is a silver rod type of thing. And it goes to our little shed, which is a CB radio in just for anybody to call if they so need to do so in an unlocked shed. So that works for 35 miles. We know it works for 35 miles in the Nottingham direction, which is the best direction. Um, and no doubt it would work actually better than the one we use for the scratchy corner tests. It's a little bit higher and it's got a thick cable on it. But what we need to do is to kind of push a, a mobile whip into service on a pole in the garden. Now he's got a closed post. So I've just put in a six foot mast section. There's about nine inches of that hammered into the ground with my handy lump hammer protecting the top with a piece of wood of course so we don't ruin it for it's a swage pole for other purposes on that crate which looks like a tea chest but it isn't we put all the pipes in these things um, i have got a biscuit tin lid what he's got is a mirror mount which he has screwed or clamped or whatever to his pole and we're just going to use I, i'd previously done a demonstration at one of the radio clubs with a, a biscuit tin um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to bend that so it becomes a right angle bracket and i'm just trying to press into service stuff we've got so we'll screw that to that pole and that's what i'll do right now so that's where we are with our budget at the moment we've got the mount and at the bottom of the pole I've just connected this piece of earth wire which came in a batch of junk and all it is is a self-tapping screw I've put a I did actually solder a uh, eyelet on there and this hunk of wire I'm just going to pace out nine feet and chuck it behind me so next I've dug out a second hand Les Wallen modulator aerial and we've mounted that on our precarious biscuit tin arrangement. Now we just use our organ pipe crate. I'm just going to check continuity. This meter is an overkill and is frustratingly so. You've got to put it into ohms and select different mode. Now I've got a continuity buzzer. So we want to check we haven't got a short circuit. And we want to check that I've got continuity from the centre pin to the actual whip. And this is where it's not quite a long enough lead. And there we have. So we've got continuity. Likewise, it'd be nice to see that there's continuity from the outer to this pole. And there is, and then once again, we've got nothing between inner and outer, which we haven't. Good, right, we're going to go and do something else uh, now, but that's a start. Oh no, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put the MFJ analyzer on it. I'm not going to use an SWR meter at this stage because I don't need to. I've got the analyzer. But um, there's a reason I'm using a second hand aerial, and that is that we know it's already been SWR'd and used for donkey's years. Because if you start having to faff around with SWRing an aerial on an arrangement that you don't know will SWR, we're kind of uh, doing a bit of a, a double whammy. So I'll connect that to the MFJ. We want it to work on 27 point. Uh, 7.9 don't we 27.8 so we'll just uh, adjust that for 27 point we've got a two, a two uh, we've got an SWR of two at 24 megs which is really useless 
so let's go on the other range there's a little tiny dip but it's absolutely rubbish arrangement so we're going to have to find an error which is going to work ultimately of course we could use an antenna matcher so after we've come back we'll see if we can find something else you can see what I'm trying to do we know that that is to be ours good but I think probably the best thing to do is to put it on a mag mount on a car there's a, a car we don't use in the yard here which I'm using as a shed so if we stick in a, a mag mount on that and see whether it has to be ours as a car aerial we'll then know that the aerial's okay before worrying about the arrangement we've got here so in my driveway I have this car that I've not been using for donkey's ears which is ideal for SWRing, we're using it as a shed, aerials on. So I've just plonked on this, um, our Mr. Benefactor Alan very kindly sent me this, what looks to be a new aerial and mag mount, it's a 3H stud type mag mount. Now this kind of shortened aerial, you are not going to SWR that in a month of Sundays on anything that's going to be dodgy. So I'm going to just check it on our MFJ analyzer and just see where the SWR is on this aerial right now. So let's have a look. Uh, 27.9, it's actually perfect as well. It's 1.7 to 1 at 27.4 megs. So more or less about channel something like channel 25 of the CPT band. So that aerial needs cutting for it to be successfully used on the UK set of channels. And this is pretty standard. As aerials come out of the packet, that's where the SWR is going to be. So let's just see where the SWR would be on 27.79. It's about 1.9 to 1. So we'll pause the camcorder, and I'm now going to put that aerial we're trying to SWR on the pole. Let's just try and see where it is on this car. We'll swap the aerial now for the modulator, standard base loaded modulator long coil. See whether we've got an SWR. Now it's waggling all over the place. I think it's got an intermittent loading coil. So as it moves around in the breeze, the needles are all over the place. So as it's stabilized, we're now getting an SWR and it's peaked at 1.4 to 1 on, well, around channel 20 of UK. So this is an area we're going to have been using. So I think that uh, it needs the heat shrink tubing taking off the loading coil and I think it needs re-soldering. I think there's some corrosion happened there. So, but the point is it has stabilised, so it should have worked on our mock-up pole. What we're going to use, uh, just with my knowledge, what I think we're going to be best off doing is something which has got a lot more loading, uh, a continuously loaded aerial. You know those fire sticks uh, which were all the rage from America? Was it Avanti did them? Well, there's a range of aerials called the Ampro, and they're, they're aimed at radio hams. And they do various HF band aerials which fit on a, a mount like this. Now, I have got the one which you can use for CB. So we're going to play with that, and we're going to have to be our, on the car, and then see if we can get anywhere on the pole. So I think that's where we're going to need to be going, to be honest. Okay, so we put the Ampro on the car, and I've adjusted it, and you'll see how much I've adjusted it in a moment. And we've got an SWR, this is my third SWR check, we've got an SWR of uh, really peaking around 27.8, uh, I've got 26.9 is 1.2 SWR, it then peaks around 27.6 which is Channel 1 UK and we get right to 20 there's 27.9 and we're still at 1.3 SWR so that's really good so I've got that in, in just the right place now I'm going to take the whip off the car and I'm just going to show you how much I've cut off so that is the top bit that's where it's starting to go inside the coil so we've got 14 inches as I'm going to cut off that so I'm just going to get the angle grinder to that, I'm going to cut that off, discard it, and then we'll screw it back in 
and see how it works out then you don't want this going inside the coil it's going to affect things and if uh, if it was being used this was the 28 meg you're using it on ham and doing more than four watts it's possible it's going to get an overheat so to use the ampro which we've now cut that bit off to use the ampro we've cut it off absolutely lovely swr so i'm going to now take that off the mag mount and we'll see whether it works up on our jerry rig pole well i've never done a scratchy corner test like this so we're on a 12 volt battery here in the garden at tango towers um i've got the SWR meter and matcher but with that particular one i couldn't get it under 2.8 which is probably okay but i decided i'd use the mfj matter a matcher which we use on some of the ham gear i want a homemade auto matcher which was aliexpress kit for about 12 quid but the trouble is it's 10 watts minimum input so that's not going to help on cb so we've got the Barnison Route 66, which I serviced a few weeks ago, which is one Alan kindly gave me. I'm using the um, battery, which Alan kindly gave me. So uh, it's a, there's a lot of Alan in here. So Mr. Chippy should be out there. I'm expecting, I'd like four miles range. With this kind of lash up, that's what I'm hoping for. So it would be nice to get Scratchy Corner, but we might not get Scratchy Corner but he might come out at the other end. So we'll see what happens. Um, this is what happens when you do these type of things. Tango 21 test. Tango 21 test. Excellent. Well, that works 50 yards. I've just pressed the tune button because I was on the wrong channel. Yeah, Are you ready? I'm ready and recording. Well, that bent me needle. Good. So we're not testing a radio, we're testing a Mickey Mouse antenna lash up today, right? Yeah, you're already getting a bit scratchy. Well, that's half a mile. Yeah, Roger that. Right, we're coming up to the end of the line. Roger, got you the end of the line. Roger, okay. What time is it anyway? It's gonna eight o'clock. Yeah, not surprised. Okay, well I'm still receiving your S9. So that's a mile. Right, we're now passing through Ancaster Crossroads. Roger on that. No problem. Roger, you're probably buried between S7 and S9 at the minute. And you're a, going to give you a solid 9. Roger. Right, we're now passing the quarry. I'll, I'll take them a bit more often just in case we might run out. Yep, so we're coming up to 2 miles at that point. Roger, got you at the top of the hill. Right, we're now passing the Chevron halfway down the hill. Roger, got you halfway down the hill, S7 over. Roger, got you there. Roger, 
Roger on that. Roger, I've got you going round Scratchy Corner at Wilsford between an S5 and an S7, over. Yep, Roger that. You know, I just mean, I can tell what you're saying, probably uh, very between S3 and S5. Roger on that, I wasn't expecting the Scratchy Corner to work. Roger, what is it? Good. That's a new one for us, the wedding venue, yes. Roger, they got you to village entrance. Roger, carry on, yeah. Roger, got you going over Willsford Level Crossing. Twenty one, Mr. Chippy. Roger, got you between the the two turns there, over. Roger, got you at the Grayley's turn. If you go to the um, Pull up point over. Tango 21, Mr. Chippy got you at the five mile point, and this is where the test ends over. I can't read you now, I can't read you, I know you're there but I can't read you, so that's where the test ends over. Ten ten. Okay, so the conclusion is, bearing in mind this is our worst direction, he's gone the wrong side of the hill. So once he dropped down to Scratchy Corner, I honestly didn't expect to receive him. But well, we did receive him at Scratchy Corner, so he's at the wrong side of the hill. Then he comes out uh, as it straightens out. We get to the three mile point, which is the Willsford level crossing, which he said I was a bit uh, scratchy there. Um, we then missed his four mile call. But we heard him four and a half miles between the two points. Then we heard him at the Rawsby point, which is the five mile point. Then he pulls over and turns off. I knew he was there, but I couldn't read him. So there we go. So, you know, if you're, um, and I've picked a set at random, but there's nothing wrong with this kind of set in this kind of location. I could have pulled out a Fidelity Thousand and got the same thing. We're running on a 12 volt battery, so the power will be a little bit lower on transmit, but it really, it, it really doesn't matter. We're trying to make a lash up of an aerial and it's kind of worked for, well, it worked all right for three and a half miles and then we run out but we're in our wrong direction so it does get you out of a situation but if there's any way you can ever mount a proper aerial on a building um, then it's obviously going to work better so back to what we've done we've got a pole hammered into the ground 
mounted on the pole we've got that biscuit tin because I haven't got any other kind of bracket with a 3.8 stud base on it it is earth to the pole and then we've got an Ampro 11 meter aerial which has been SWR'd already on the car and I chopped about 14 inches off that and then at the bottom there we've got a counterpoise wire and it's just disappearing off in one direction perhaps it would work better with with two or three radial counterpoise wires but there you go these are all things which can be experimented with but I just wanted to see could we do it so SWR we could not get down and so we used the matcher unfortunately our decent matcher uh, either isn't playing ball or, it's, or whatever but the uh, MFJ matcher has been no problem whatsoever so I would have preferred to have an SBR without using a matcher because of course you're losing power with a matcher so there we are it works it gets you out of a thing in an emergency situation and for those people who've got witches as neighbours who would uh, who'd call planning permission onto you who would uh, <laughs> if you even thought about having anything attached to your house well it does also get you on the air so yeah, uh, three to four miles range and I, and I think you've had it. Thanks for watching today's Antenna Lash Up Bodge. Right, we're now passing the top of the hill as we go down in towards Wilsford. Oh, well. Roger, got you at the top of the hill. Passing the chevrons halfway down the hill. Roger, you're halfway down the hill and seven over. Roger. Right, we're now passing the chevron at the bottom of the hill. Roger, got you there. Roger that, you're getting very noisy to me, but I can hear you. Roger on that. from Mr Chippy. We are now going round Scratchy Corner, Wilsford. Over. Yep, roger that. You're noisy to me. I can tell what you're saying. Uh, probably varying between S3 and S5. Roger, well it did. Right, we're now passing the wedding venue, over. Yeah, Roger, that. I've not been there before. Now passing the other scratchy corner entrance, over. Roger, it's getting difficult for me to tell now, but uh, we'll carry on. Passing over Wilsford Level Crossing. Over. Yeah, I can tell you there, but it's very difficult for me to make out what you're saying now. Through the noise, we're about.
about halfway between Kelby Turn and Grey Lees over. I can tell you there, but I can't hear what you say. Right, we're now passing the Grey Lees Turn over. Say ten ten. 